joining us on the CSUN 365 journey to health. And I think that's where we're all coming together specifically today to talk about nutrition. Why? Because nutrition matters. And if we look at this, I want you to think of something kind of interesting. How many of you have ever heard the word diet? <laughs> all right, hands up. How do you spell the word diet? D-I-E-T. Aha, correct. You get an A plus in spelling, Josh. All right, so you spelled the word diet. What are the first three letters of diet? That's what I was going to say. They're, they're kind of an ominous um, word built in. That is exactly right. So when people think about January resolutions and when people think about dieting, they think, oh, this is how I'm going to get healthy. In the nutrition field, what we look at is the word diet is not really what we want to approach eating, the way we want to approach eating. The word diet comes from the word dieta, which means a manner of living, not restriction. So when we think about foods, I think what we are trained to do, especially on the coastal states, we think about good food versus bad food. And I want you to erase all of that because there aren't good foods and bad foods. Some foods are more nutritious or nutrient dense that we would call them. And some are less nutrient dense, but not good or bad. What we wanna look at is the dieta, the manner of living and how are we going to do that? And that's what our journey is going to take us on today. So Josh, if you'll give me that second slide, please. Everybody see that? Second slide. There we go. All right, always things to keep in mind. Healthy eating is about eating for life. And I didn't come up with this concept. You'll see my notation down at the bottom, but I'm going to make things very simple for you because healthy eating is how do we want to eat to have quality of life? And Josh, please move us to the next slide. Perfect. I'm going to go over six really simple concepts before I get you down to easier concepts than this. So think about the essential life's concepts. One is be a planner. And first thing with that is you want to create a shopping list. Have you ever experienced going to, into a market hungry? Right? Hands up if you have done that. Yeah, and the tendency then, what would it be, Beth, if you go to the market hungry, and you're on mute right now, <laughs> if you go to the market hungry, what happens? Oh, I buy everything that is probably not really um, very healthy. Perfect, exactly. Yes. And it, my, one of my majors was food science, nutrition food science, and the science of food has to do with marketing. So think about the market. Imagine that you were in there, and I know we don't get to go in there as much these days, but think about any experience you've had in a market. It's strategically set so the more nutrient-dense foods are around the periphery of the market, right? We go up and down the aisle. It's very rare that we spend a lot of time on the periphery. Why? because up and down the aisles, those are called the attractive nuisances. Those cost the market, the food manufacturing companies less to make, and they can inflate the prices and you pay for them. If you plan for eating, then what you're going to do is go exactly where your shopping list is, and rather than buying at this tricky thing that they do to grab you, you're going to go from your list and concentrate on the things that you really do need to have around you at home. And you're more likely to have healthier foods in your house or more nutritiously dense foods. So don't let them trick you because it is a marketing strategy. That's the science of how do I sell food, right? And you, you can't see this, but I am only four foot 10. And I can tell you that if you walk down the market aisles, the higher sugar foods are at my height, which is kid height. So think about the cereal aisles. 
and the ones that pop out at you, those are the ones that grab kids. And if the kids are with the family, they're going to say, I want this, I want this, I want this. So it's all strategy. Got it? All right, so then, oops, I hear a reverberation in my voice. Do you, does anybody hear that? No? Okay, we're good. All right, so the second thing is keep whole plant-based foods visible. So now you get your foods home, and it's the way you set up your food choices in the house that are going to encourage you or discourage you from making healthier choices. So let's give you an example. If you have a bowl of candy on a kitchen counter, our tendency is to go, oh, I'll just grab a few. Or you don't even think about them, they're there and you take them. If you have some fresh fruit in a bowl, eye level, then when you walk by that area in the kitchen, that's something that you're more likely to take. Same thing in a refrigerator setup. If you have the healthier foods toward the front, then those are the ones that you see first when you open the fridge or the freezer and you say, that's what I want. While I'm thinking of it, because I want to make sure that I say this, frozen veggies, prop for all of us, frozen veggies probably are more nutrient dense than fresh veggies that have been sitting on your counter, right? So I would love for people to erase any guilt about frozen fruits and vegetables because those are harvested, they are prepared, flash, they are cleaned, flash frozen, and they have all their nutrition frozen in them when you put them away. So you can always have them accessible and throw them in soups, throw them in rice, throw them in pasta, and you know you've got good nutrition there. Got it? So that's super easy. So plant, keeping the plant-based foods visible is really important. There's something else that I, the concept that I love to share with people, and it's called attractive nuisance. Here's what it is. When you know that you have something like ice cream or candy in a freezer, you know that it's there and it's going, I'm here, eat me. I'm here, eat me. It's a nuisance. You want to go get away, but you can't until you've eaten it. So I'm not saying don't have these things around, but I want, it's really important that all of us would be aware of what is causing us to eat. And we're going to talk next time about what's the difference between hunger and appetite. But what you'll know is if your glucose levels drop, your body needs to fulfill that, that nutrient. So that hunger is going to make us want to eat. But if you just see a food around and you say, oh, I want that, that's not hunger, that's appetite. Got it? So if you keep plant-based foods whole, visible, oops, let's see. For some reason. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's go on to the uh, do batch cooking. So let's not change it yet. Do batch cooking means that if we are home a lot now, if we are home and there's one day where you can think, I'm going to, I feel like doing a lot of cooking, then do that. Take out the fresh ingredients that you have or the frozen, make some stick them in the freezer, and then if you do actually feel hunger, or it's breakfast time, lunch time, dinner time, snack time, you've got things that are already made for you that are already available, and it's perfect for you to just be able to grab, right? So batch cooking is a good thing to do. So be a planner, have that shopping list. Keep plant-based foods whole, visible, and do batch cooking. So Josh, if you'll give us the next slide, please, that would be great. And there we have our last three for life's essential concepts. One thing, number four, is find support. 
So just like with everything, it's much better to do it with a friend when you're exercising. Dr. Loy will tell you about that too. Have a buddy system, makes it much more fun. Just on a personal note, I have a group of running friends. We've been running together for 40 years. We meet six days a week. We do take one day off. We are a lot older now than when we started. But if I didn't know that those people were waiting for me in the morning, I probably would not go six days a week. And the fun thing is that we go at a level that's aerobic. So that means we can walk and do our exercise or run rather and do our exercise. And the way that I know I'm doing aerobic exercise is that I can talk, right? So I've got enough, enough oxygen in. We carry on conversations. People can't believe that we talk. But to tell you the honest truth, the strongest muscles in my body after running with this group of women for 40 years is my jaw muscles because we talk so much, right? So find support group, take them on your journey with you. If it's somebody at home, let's say you have a parent. A lot of us are living at home these days with other family members. Invite them. Say, gee, I really need help. Don't say to the person, you need help you need to get healthy. Just say, I really need some help and it would be fun for me if you would join me. And so that's finding support for your journey. Then if you go to the number five, the hint is practice meatless Mondays. And the only reason I chose Monday is because it goes with meatless. It could be without meat Wednesdays too, or whatever it is, just pick one day a week that's consistent and that day a week, you're going to say, yeah, I don't need animal flesh today. How's that for a gross picture? Animal flesh. Okay, so you pick one day a week. You could still have meatless every day if you want, but the one that you're committing to is, is a goal that's not overwhelming. So pick one and practice it. And if you start to look at plant-based foods, there are a couple of things that you need to know about this. Plant-based foods tend to have less fat in them, tend to have more dietary fiber, tend to not have saturated fat, which is the thing that is hard on your arteries, hard on your heart, can slow down the blood flow to the brain, so we want to have foods that are going to be healthier for our bodies. And if you actually do that, that helps the environment because there's less methane gas, there's less waste. There are all kinds of good things that come out of this. Number one being, of course, your health and then you're around to enjoy it more. And then the last of the six, not the last, but the sixth one of the life six essential concepts is make plants the star of your plate. And so I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can see this, but this is called the My Plate, and you're going to learn more about it. But if you look at this, we've got vegetables, fruit, grains, protein, and dairy. The majority of this is plant-based. So if you think about throughout the day, let's look, am I eating a mostly plant-based, then that's going to improve your health and ultimately also improve the planet. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, we did have a question re relative to nutrient density. The question from uh, Kate was, does nutrient de density also apply to dried vegetables? Ah, very good. Yes, yeah, so that's such a perfect question. Thank you very much. What happens when we dry vegetables, when we dry them out, is just as you would assume, we lose the water, we dehydrate them. So that's going to concentrate the nutrients. Those are good. The problem is that if we eat dried food only, we're getting, let's say, Let's say 10 grapes takes up this amount. If you have 10 dried grapes, it takes up this amount. So one thing from a nutrition point of view or, or a nutrient density type of food, you're gonna get a ton of 
nutrients, but also more calories. So let's say I want a half a cup of grapes, that's 80 calories. If I want a half a cup of dried grapes, it's probably 240 calories, right? Unless you take your dehydrated and rehydrate them, right? Then, then you're putting the water back in. But like if we're backpacking, you want dehydrated food. So does that answer the question? Yes, thank you so much. All right, perfect, perfect. Then let's go down to the next slide, please. And this is just a review, the six things. Be a planner. Does everybody understand what that means to plan? If you, if you need a, a redefinition, let me know. Okay, keep whole plant-based foods visible, right? Remember, eat me, come eat me. You want to see them, so that's what you're getting. Do batch cooking, do a bunch. So if you're one day making pasta, making spaghetti, do a whole bunch. But we're, we're going to talk about serving sizes shortly. If you do a whole bunch, take out a serving size, and I'll explain that to you, and then put the rest away. Some of us tend to be clean plate people. Do you know what that is? Josh does. Okay. Josh, what is cleaning your plate? Means you don't leave anything left on your plate. You bet. You bet. And some of us come from a family of, we got to make the plate clean. You think you're insulting whoever prepared the foods. And some of us, it's just like, there we go back to the attractive nuisance. It's sitting there. Like, don't tell my husband I have said this, but I've been married for 50, 51 years, but I have to serve and put food away before I, we sit down to eat. Because if I don't, I don't have food left over for the next day. He, I'm sure, and I, I, this is a made up term, I think he doesn't have what's called an apostat, meaning he doesn't have something that tells him when he's full. He just keeps eating till the, the plate is empty or the container is empty, but shh, don't tell him I said that. Okay, so anyway, it's really important, be a planner, keep the, plant, keep the plant-based foods visible, do batch cooking, meaning when you're making it, make a bunch, but then put stuff away so that you're not tempted to eat it all at once. Find somebody to go on this journey with you, this journey to health. How do you like that? We're using this term again. Practice or, or find, find support, practice meatless Mondays, or without meat Wednesdays, and make plants the star of your plates. So pretty simple concepts, right? Josh, if you take us, you knew, you knew. Okay, so here comes the word nutrition. And nutrition for me means eating something and getting the nutrients out of it. But if I were to hold up a peach, when most people look at this, they don't think about the science of this. They think this is a peach. I'm gonna swallow it, I'm gonna chew it, use all of my, like that, swallow it. Boy, wasn't that delicious. I'm so weird that when I look at a peach, I go, oh, that's one serving of fruit that's got a lot of vitamin C, it's got some vitamin A, it's got blah, blah. So that's what you call a nutrition nerd, right? And I'm fully on, I'm being a nerd. With nutrition, you look at the food, there are nutri nutrients within. And now everybody hold up a peach, pretend, take a bite, you're chewing it, you're swallowing it, you feel it go down. As it goes down through your digestive tract, your body has all of these miracle things that are going to extract the vitamin C, dehydrate it, use some hydrochloric acid to break this down, take the fiber, move it there. So it's going to digest it through action, through interaction, balance everything. And we look at the balance of all the nutrients you're taking in, what you need, and then we study, how's that related to diet and disease? So nutrition is a great big word, 
everybody's familiar with it because we eat food hopefully every day. But when we think about it, we're really looking to see how can we set this up so that we're getting people healthier. And with this journey to health, this is exactly what we want to do. So combining this with balance, variety, moderation, and your exercise, that's the prescription for completing this journey to health. Oh, you are so good, Josh. Thank you. So here we've got the words that are absolutely perfect. We took six concepts. Now we're culling them down to three. Balance, repeat after me. Balance. Balance. Variety. Variety. Moderation. 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 And then the kinesiology and exercise part of it is exercise. But when you look at balance, you look at all of the different food groups that we've talked about. So you look at fruits, you look at vegetables, you look at grains, you look at protein, you look at dairy, we look at fat. And am I balancing it all to equal my journey to health? So balance means getting that balance, making sure that I'm getting the right amount of servings of the grains, of the fruits, of the vegetables, et cetera. Variety means that in each food group, so let's just take vegetables. You want variety. All right, let's see how good a job you've all done in your upbringing. I'm holding up, what is this? Carrot. All right, it's a carrot. And what did you learn carrots are good for? For your eyes. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, they're good for your eyes and it has, Jen, you're right, vitamin A. It's got vitamin A. So that's an important thing to know. But a carrot is, it's a vegetable, but so is broccoli. A carrot has high vitamin A. Broccoli has other nutrients in it. So we want to make sure that you're not just only eating carrots, but you're looking. And again, if you go to the periphery of the market, you see all of the different vegetables. Try some. Try different ones. And again, here's where we'll go right into the frozen fruits and vegetables. If you've got those around, have a variety there. And then you'll know, you won't have to say, oh, did I get my 1,000 micrograms of vitamin A today? Did I get this uh, 85 milligrams of vitamin C today? You don't have to worry about that. That's just too much mess. Leave that to us. Okay, and just think, am I getting balance? Am I getting variety? Yes, and eating the colors of the rainbow. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Hannah. That's exactly right. You look and you say, oh, colors of the rainbow, then that must be right. As long as you're not just eating colored jello. <laughs> right? So we want colors of the rainbow. That's perfect. So balance, you understand, balancing from all the food groups. Variety means within each food group, try different things. And moderation means stop feeling guilty if you have a cookie, if you have some candy, if you have some ice cream. That's part of life, right? So balance, variety, moderation, and then of course the component that you'll hear more about is exercise. And then, thank you, we wanna know how do we know if we're getting balanced? So I said I'm four foot 10. And I might say, Josh, how tall are you if I may ask? Five seven. All right, so Josh is five seven. Four foot 10 woman, five foot seven guy. We don't eat the same number of servings. That won't keep us healthy. If I ate as much as Josh would need to keep him healthy, then that would be too many calories for me, right? So we want to know what is exactly right for me. And there are programs that I will talk to you about that will get you there. So if we want to look to see how are we getting balance, variety, moderation. And then Josh, if you'll move me to the next slide, please. There's something that you can do that's a tracker. That you, so you can just plan, you can keep track, write, write things down. What did I eat? And we don't want you to do this obsessively because then we worry that it's going to be too much of a compulsion. You need to enjoy your food. That's, that was, is what eating is about. 
But if you start to look at this and start to say, well, am I getting a variety of vegetables? Am I getting some, a, a variety of fruit? Am I getting some protein? And by the way, just FYI, when you think about protein, most people think about animal flesh. But did you know that we get protein in plants? So we get them in vegetables, we get them in grains, we get them in legumes, we get them in nuts. It doesn't have to be just animal protein. But we're looking at protein. So am I getting the fruits, the vegetables, the grains, hopefully a lot of whole grains? Am I getting from the dairy? And if you're vegan, meaning don't eat any um, animal-based foods, then there are alternatives for, for getting the nutrients that would be in dairy products. So it's just looking at this thing, looking at this tracker and, and marking it down for a few days to see. Do, and do you see on the very bottom of that sheet, there is a my plate, you see that? All right, so I, I'm gonna show you a little bit about that. But when you, let's say you enter a food, and for breakfast, you had cereal and banana and milk. Cereal would go into what of the my plate? Where would you put that? Breakfast. Okay, it is breakfast, absolutely. And what food group would it be? Grains. Yes. Woo! You got it. Okay, so the cereal would be the grain. So you would look down at your my plate, choose my plate, and you'd put one little slash point in the my plate, in, in the grain. If you look at the banana, what's that? Fruit. Exactly. So you put one little check mark in the fruit. And then if you look at the milk. Dairy. Yeah, it goes in the dairy. So you'd put one little check mark there. So at the end of every day, you could look at that, fill, it, fill out the correct things in the my plate, and then you'll know Am I getting too many in the protein group? Am I getting too many in this? Did I only get one from the vegetable group? And in our um, typical diet, we, that's where we typically eat less, eat fewer vegetables. So you're going to see that, oh gosh, I can see right in front of me. Didn't have to have anybody tell me how, much, how many micrograms of vitamin A or, or milligrams of, of C. You just look at that and you say, ooh, I'm not eating enough fruit or I'm not eating enough vegetables. And then you can fill in, when you've got the nutrient-dense foods, you can fill in by having an extra uh, carrot in a day or something like that. Does that make sense so far? All right, any questions? All right, then let's move us along. All right, then the, the question that many of us would have would be, then what's a serving size? So I want you to look at the palm of your hand. Okay, and yes, you can get this form from the web and I'm gonna get you a choice. You go to choosemyplate.gov and it's put out by the US Department of Agriculture. Right, so just choose my plate. But if you look at the size of the palm, not the whole hand, but the palm, that's about a serving size. Now, sometimes I'll have a patient say to me, oh, I did just have a palm size, but when I look, it's the palm that was this big, right? So palm is just rounded. I'll show you an example. Palm of my hand, this is pasta, this is spaghetti. Notice it's not that. So think about the size of your hand. And again, if I go back, Josh, you don't mind if I use you as my person? Okay, so Josh, it, I would probably need four to five servings from the grain group. Josh is gonna need seven or eight or maybe even nine for several reasons. One, male, two, young, three, active. So he, in order to keep himself balanced, he's going to need more serving sizes, more servings than I am, okay? If protein is in so many other foods, then do we have to eat it? Ah, that is a great question again. So here's the deal. When, 
<laughs> Sequoia National Park, that's good. All right, so with, uh, if, if protein is in so many foods, why do we need more from the protein group? Well, protein, I'm gonna show you an example of a serving size of protein, right? Here's this. This, in, in, when we try and figure out how much do you need, we calculate in what you're getting from the animal-based protein and what you're getting from the plant-based protein. But the, the thing that you have to know is that's all part of the science behind it all when we come up with these numbers of how many do you need. So if we look at total amount of calories, this is mind blowing. This is to me. And this is from when I first started studying about nutrition. We only need 10 to 15% of our total daily calorie intake from protein. As a society, we probably get twice that. So what we're looking at is how do we cut down the number of servings from animal-based protein? And then that's going to, we'll be hungry for eating more nutrient-dense foods from the other food groups. But that's a brilliant question because yeah, I'm telling you protein's in almost everything. It's not in fruit and it's not in fat, but it's in every other food. But again, let me stress that in the plant-based proteins, they're not complete, so they may be missing, they will be missing an amino acid. The only exception for plant-based food that has a complete protein, quinoa, quinoa. So you look at, we look, we'll study societies that are all plant-based and how can they grow? How can they do and live and repair tissue? Those sorts of things, it's because they eat food in combination and and many like in peru the tribes that we've studied in peru have a quinoa based diet so they're getting complete proteins there so looking again look at the size of the palm of your hand all right and that's what your serving size is whether we're talking about animal based protein whether we're talking about plant based protein whether we're talking about Broccoli. Um, oh, I know what I want to show you too. Here's another, here's a legume. This is, this is my fake food. This is peanut butter. So one table, two tablespoons is one serving of protein. And for most of us, we need two to three servings of protein in a day. So think about the perfect complete protein would be a peanut butter sandwich on whole wheat bread because it's got the grain and it's got the legume, and you've got all your necessary amino acids. So that peanut butter sandwich, good on you. It's good. Okay, but this, two of these, is equivalent to one three-ounce serving of chicken. All right. We and have a question from Janwin. Janwin, if you want to go ahead. So the second part of my question was, um, what foods do you put do you uh, put as a check mark in the protein section? Perfect, perfect question. So if it's a grain or a legume, I'm I'm sorry. If it's a legume, then it's going to be in the protein okay. section, right? Oh. Well. Uh, if it's a like rice that does have protein in it, you're just going to put it in the grain group. But that's um, the difficult part is to know which of those other foods have protein in them. Right. Well, what we one of the things from a health perspective that I would look at is what are the foods that are likely to increase health risks? So I look at animal flesh as an example. Those have more saturated fats. I would be more concerned if a person is eating more animal-based protein. So they had, instead of two servings, they had five servings or six because I'm calculating in as a registered dietitian, that's higher in saturated fat, that's not healthy. If I looked at this and I saw peanut butter, two tablespoons, 
one serving, I wouldn't be concerned about that. Or if a person is eating only plant-based proteins, I wouldn't be so concerned because it would also, I would look at and say, well, those are nutrients that are also satisfying what vegetables would be satisfying. So I, I would be more concerned on sticking to the number if it's animal flesh and you go over the number of servings that you're allocated for protein that way. Does that help? So if it's a legume and I put it in protein, you won't count it as a vegetable. I would not count it as a vegetable. I'm not going to allow you to double dip because I would also like you to get the nutrient density from vegetables. So remember a legume, if we look, yes, a legume has fiber and those sorts of things, but it doesn't have folic acid. It doesn't have uh, vitamin K. It doesn't have a lot of the nutrients that you're going to get from vegetables. So I'm trying to help you get more bang for your buck with looking at the food and, and making it easier. So again, because we tend to overeat in the animal-based protein, I'm more concerned with, are we getting enough from the vegetables to get that variety of nutrients that we need? Does that help? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, so I want to, I am, you can tell, I'm encouraging everybody to eat more vegetables. Um, it's easy to eat fruit because if we go on the sweetometer, that's another made up word by Lysagor. So how sweet is a food? In the sweetometer, fruit used to be the sweetest, sweetest thing, but now it's not. Fruits are easy. For, it's easier to get people to eat fruit than it is to get people to eat vegetables because people have a tendency to want to have that sweet. Okay. We did have one more question from Kate. Um, question was for the different groups, fruits, grains, vegetables, dairy, protein, what's the percentage breakdown? Ew, that is absolutely a perfect question. So if you look at grains, vegetables, and fruits, those are higher carbohydrate based. So we want about 50 to 65% of our calories coming from those, right? We want 10 to 15% coming from protein of the, of the total calories. So, so let's say I need 2,300 calories in a day. If I look just at calories, yes, 50 to 65% coming from the plant-based, uh, 10 to 15% coming from animal protein and the rest coming from the dairy based, right? So we can have for, for heart health. And again, what, one of the things I love to do is have people close their eyes. So everybody close your eyes and imagine how you feel and are today. And then we're going to add 50 years onto everybody. And you're going to imagine yourselves being 50 years older than you are today. All right, as you're 50 years older, are you still running track? Are you crawling on the floor with grandchildren or great grandchildren? Are you able to breathe just like you can today? Or do all of you picture yourselves in a wheelchair on oxygen, which is the goal for you? So what we want to do is take that journey to health so that we've got quality of life. I really do, and I have longevity in my family genes. I'd love to be, to live to be 140, but not if everybody has to take care of me, I can't breathe well, any of that. So I want quality of life. That's, that would be my choice. Well, my journey to health is what choices am I making now that will help? We can't always plan, right, uh, Beth? We can't always plan for everything that might come in our way that gets in the way of our ultimate health. But 
what is it that I can do to help stack the cards in my deck so that I'm go going to have as much quality for as long as I can. So what I want to do is make nutrition just sort of a habit that you don't even think about. It's something that you just do. And, and again, I am such a nerd at the end of a day, I might go, hmm, did I have enough vegetables today? Now, I know that nobody else thinks that way, right? And so at the end of the day, I might say, no, gosh, I only had four servings of vegetables. Okay, I'm going to go find a carrot. I am going to find, I cooked some beets for dinner tonight. They're left over. I'm going to have more. Trust me, nerd, 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 nerd. But it's, again, that's how I roll. That's how I roll. So hopefully that makes sense to people. What we're trying to do is encourage everybody on that journey to health to, to be as healthy for as long as you can, Jen. Yeah, let's embrace the nerd. Okay, thank you for that. All right, so everybody understands serving size. Everybody understands the portions. All right, Josh, if you'll move us on to the next slide, please. That brings us back. Now you really understand balance, variety, moderation, and then the exercise. Now I put Desiree's name here because Desiree is just this amazing young woman who has started on this journey to health and she's making videos of this. So she and I Zoom talked and then so i met with her the one time and we had just we talked about so much it was beautiful mostly me listening as she's telling me about her part of the journey and then when i met her the second time i said so so what do you remember and what she said to me is oh gosh balance variety moderation and it was like yeah 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 that was it so instead of me saying, well, you have to eat eight carrots a day, or you have to, I keep saying carrots, sorry, they're right behind me, makes me want to eat them. Um, instead of saying, this is how many calories that you have, you have to worry about this and that, you don't, you just think in the global perspective, do I have some balance in all of the food groups? Am I getting some variety in? And for, for goodness sake, just stop feeling guilty you can have some stuff in moderation. By the way, moderation would mean don't only eat only apples. Moderate those as well. So that, that's going to drive us toward the balance and the variety, if that makes sense. Any questions so far then? All right, so here was the question that I got from earlier. This is an example, and, and I don't want you to laugh too hard, but... I use the program, I use the Choose My Plate. I, as a registered dietitian, I've got access to all kinds of uh, ways that we evaluate nutrition, much more complex than anybody would wanna do. But what I did as an example is I put in, I go to the website, I put in that my age is 25, no laughing. Okay, so I put in my age is 25, my sex is female, physical activity 30 to 60 minutes a day, at least four days a week. And then through it, and it puts in my height and my weight and that sort of thing. Then it generates how much, how many servings from the dairy, how many from the grain, how many from the veggies, how many from the fruit, and how many from the meat and beans group or the, the protein based group, right? So there it is right in front of me and I can look at that and what I do with the choose my plate that I put on that one slide that had the list, write down your list of the foods that you're eating. When you do the choose my plate, which again is an awesome tool, I can then look to, and I'll put in a number. So I would go into the dairy, which is you see in that blue circle, I put three. And then remember where I showed you how to write that list? So I would look at the end of the day, did I have three check marks or slashes there? Then I knew that I got enough for my dairy. For the grain, 
seven ounces. And let me show you again, one slice of bread is an ounce, right? So that's easy. You don't have to weigh it on the package. It'll tell you, or you can guesstimate. So I know that somehow I need a variety of the different grains. I need seven variety, whether it comes from that or my tortilla or from my crackers, whatever it is, I'm looking, I put the number, I would put the number seven in the grains. And then at the end of the day, just while I'm getting used to this whole thing, I would put in the seven and then look to see how many check marks at the end of the day. And if I need more grain, maybe I would, and more dairy, I'd have some cheese on a, a cracker or something like that. Then same thing with the fruits, I'd put in two cups. Let me just show you. All right, so this of cut up fruit is a half a cup. So if I need two cups, how many, how many servings of half cup fruit would I need? Yes, exactly, Josh. A plus again. You got it. All right. You're the star of the class. All right. So four. So if you're, if I'm supposed to have two cups and a cut up fruit is a half a cup, that's what I want. Oh, I wanted to show you something. Okay. So better when you're having, when you're eating or making food choices, eating the whole fruit or the whole vegetable is healthier than having a cup or having it in the liquid form. So just as a mind blower, this is about 60 calories, one orange. I can eat the whole thing minus the rind, right, and the peel. In order to satisfy me, and think about chewing the orange, swallowing it, think about the pleasure you get. You can, I see all of your salivary glands going right now, right? You're chewing this, you're imagining it, you're swallowing it, this is great. If I wanted to get that same feeling of, oh, I had my fruit, it would probably take me four servings. So instead of 60 calories from my fruit, one serving, I'm getting 240 calories, right? Do you see the math in that? So better to have it in its whole form than, in, than drinking the juice from it. However, if you're, if you're an athlete, what I would always counsel the athletes to do, you need immediate fueling or refueling after you've had a heavy workout. So then I might have you drink a glass of juice so that it's going to replenish the cells. But for us, for our journey to health, that's why this one, 60 calories, one serving from the fruit versus 240 calories from that glass of the juice. Okay, it <laughs> does it apply to smoothies? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Smoothies are great because you can put all this stuff in. You can, and by the way, remember what I said about how much protein we get? You don't need to add the protein scoops, I promise you, you don't need that. All right, so with a smoothie, you can put all this in, but just remember that when you're doing a smoothie, you've got a whole banana, you've probably got two cups of berries, you've probably got, oh gosh, strawberries, all kinds of great stuff, but look back to the slide that Josh is showing you and look to see how many servings of fruit did I need in a day, right? And if I'm getting it all in a smoothie, that can be fine, no guilt, but just remember, if, if my goal is to get fit, and my goal, and I never like to use the word lose weight or diet. You know, I already explained that. Our ultimate goal is to be fit. That's what we want to do. So how do we get to fitness? And that is by balance, variety, moderation, and of course, exercise. So uh, does that make sense in looking at the plate? All right, perfect. Josh, let's move us on to the next one. Ah. Oh, you have a question, Jen. You're on mute. I have a question about the dairy. So for those who are lactose intolerant, what would you recommend for those people who get really bloated eating uh, 
cheese or consuming whole milk? That is the perfect question. There is almond milk. There is rice milk. There are all kinds of alternatives. There's lactate milk, which is still, when we have the bloating, if we're lactose intolerant, generally it's the lactase sugar in a dairy product. And you, we don't, people who are lactose intolerant don't have that enzyme to break down that sugar, so it bloats. Lactate milk, and I'm not selling lactate milk, so I want to convince you of that. Lactate milk has that, that sugar molecule already broken down. So most people who are lactose intolerant can tolerate that. But it's something you would want to try just like a, a quarter of a cup of it to see how your body handles that. But if you like it, and generally it has a sweeter taste, Ashley, you like it. My grandson loves it. So it does have a sweeter taste to it. It's almost like a coconut milk. But to Jen's question, there are, especially today, we're, we're lucky for many things. Being alive today, we've got access to Zoom. We've got all this technology. So you've got this pandemic and still we're able to meet. Well, think about how lucky we are with all of the food products that are available to us as alternatives. I, and this, it, it seems to me now that almost all markets sell all of those products. You don't need to go to the most expensive markets to find them. And while I'm on this topic, I'm just going to interject one tiny thing, and that is organic only means that it's got a carbohydrate, a hydrogen, and an oxygen. Organically grown foods are more expensive. They don't have, to me, this is me, I don't advise my clients to go buy organic foods. We've got such good food supply, as long as we're not food insecure, and we can afford just going to the market, you can get good foods. And again, remember what I said, yeah, if you read the label, you have to read the label because on a label of packaged foods, if it's got all of these names in the ingredients that you don't recognize at first, that means they're filled with lots of other products that aren't the real food. So you wanna make sure like, if you're buying wheat bread, whole wheat bread, that wheat whole grain is one of the first three ingredients listed and it's got a, a short food list. But it, again, today, especially, we are so lucky in Southern, well, in California, that we have access to all of those. The, the challenge for us right now, because of the pandemic, is that we need to be very concerned about being around other people. So, for me, and again, here's one of the advantages of being in the senior population. A lot of our markets still have a limited a time, limited amount of time where only seniors are in the market. But so I get to go to my Trader Joe's or to, to whatever my generic market is and just have a good time with all of that. Okay, so I, I want to go through the list of all of you and have you tell us one thing that you learned from today in our journey. All right, so let's have everybody take off your mics. All right, Jan, what's one thing you learned? One thing I learned today is that almond milk, coconut milk are considered dairy. I, I've always replaced, I've been replacing almond milk and coconut milk uh, for regular milk, but I didn't know that it was still classified as dairy. So I'm pretty happy that I learned that today. Thank you. Good. Perfect, Jen. Okay. Who else? Irma. I learned about balance, um, variety, and moderation. <laughs> okay. Yadira. About my plate and the portions. Perfect. All right. Jen Wynn. Well, I'm a little clearer on that whole issue of um, the proteins in non-meat um, foods. I, I still have to 
check yeah. that out because I, I had trouble classifying those foods. All right, you know what? I'm going to invite you. My email is the CSUN. It's my first name dot last name at csun.edu. So you can just email me. Yeah. I can continue on and I can hopefully. Hey, yo, what is going on, guys? Welcome back to another video. Okay. Um, Naira, Nairi? Yes, Nairi. <laughs> Nairi. I learned um, to not use protein powder that much and get my protein from legumes and other like natural sources. Excellent. Ooh, hi Desiree. <laughs> All right, Kate, what about you? I learned to eat more frozen vegetables and more um, uh, dry vegetables as well. Excellent, excellent, yay. All right, <laughs> Dr. Loy. Still can't hear you. Uh, I think he's done that <laughs> on purpose. <laughs> Probably. Okay, Ashley. I learned that you need to not track as much and just kind of be aware of how much you're tracking and just look over it all day because it can be it can become a habit to over track. Perfect. Perfect. Good job. All right, Maria. I go by Agnes. I know my. Oh, my sorry, name. Agnes. Okay. Uh, I did also learn about the frozen fruits and vegetables. I always thought that fresh was was better, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that frozen fruits and vegetables still had uh, were still as effective as. Good. That's great, and that saves money, so we can erase the guilt. All right, Margarita. Um, I learned about the different options for lactose intolerance people. For example, you mentioned like the rice milk and the almond milk. Great, perfect. And that will help you get your nutrients the, that normally uh, animal milk would supply, but the calcium and phosphorus and that. Good job. Anna. Um, Hana, um, I. Oh, sorry. Maybe it was someone else. Okay. <laughs> uh, anybody, come on in. Okay, I'll just talk. Hana, um, I learned that I should eat more plant proteins and less animal proteins. And I also would say I'm kind of a nutritional nerd as well. But. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for us nerds. Good job. Okay. And Anna, um, I learned that as much as you shouldn't overthink tracking, but how important it is to track and plan ahead your meals because it will make a difference on how you see your plate on how much plant base you're doing and your protein and minimizing the animal products. Excellent, excellent. All right, so that's perfect. Um, Gary? Yeah, I just learned so much today. Um, <laughs> like Agnes said, you know, she took my thunder, the frozen vegetables. I really didn't know that. And uh, I like to have all this in front of me so I can digest it. Excellent. Pardon the nutrition term. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. All right. No pun intended. Um, no pun intended. Arlene? I just put it in the chat. I learned to eat to be fit. I thought it was very cool how you said that um, if you're missing a vegetable to eat it and not necessarily um, take it away and not be fit. Perfect. All right. Good job. And Judith? I learned that um, the protein size for me, the protein portion for me is the size of my palm. Perfect. Yes. And that's, you've got your hand with you wherever you go, right? It's not that I want you grabbing a plateful, a handful of mashed potatoes when you're out to dinner, but I, you can just kind of go like this, right? <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. All right. Did I miss anybody? 
All right. You know what? You guys, thank you, everybody. Asia wants to share. Ah, who, who? Asia. She just oh. put her camera on. She's driving. Asia, you should probably pull over. I'm yes, thank you, right Asia. Now. No. <laughs> Uh, she said, I think, was it Maria just said what I was going to say about the serving size being the size of your hand? Because I was just with my family and they made chicken enchiladas. And I was like, I'm probably serving myself too much right now. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I didn't know how much, you know, exactly what the serving because it was a whole pan of it. But now I know. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And it's such an easy concept. Really, nutrition is easy. It's just that you have to give it a little bit of thought and, and we've got lifelong habits. So it's like, all right, we need to, what do we want to concentrate on? Remember the journey is the journey to health. So embracing it all. Ah, Ashley works at a grocery store. You've got that stuff around you all the time. Go to your grocery store, check it out. Look at where the cereals are. Think about my eye level. And, and the other thing is, you know, when, when you're going through checkout, think about what they put there. That's where the candies are. Those are, again, the attractive nuisances. Their job in a market is to sell. Our job is to be wise consumers. Right? All right. And Desiree, my friend, my mentor, my mentee. She is taking an amazing journey. Do you want to say anything? Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I learned something today, too. Like, we were going over all the stuff we went over on our meetings, and I learned so much. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time with those. Um, and keep taking your time with me on this journey. But I did learn something new today, and I got the box to show everybody. So Ooh. I ate tonight, and it's edamame spaghetti. Ooh. And so it's, you know, it's plant-based and the only ingredient is, is soybeans. So if, if you can't have soybeans, then, you know, this, this might not be for you, but 24 grams of protein in a serving. So, wow. it's, so it's actually pretty high in protein and it's technically not the green, right? You know, and it's right. It's like right. A, yeah. That's, that's a great tool. That is perfect. And Thank then I had cherries also sorry for the pitted yay okay the cherries go in what food group fruits yes ma'am yes ma'am a plus to you well i want to say thank you to all of you thank you to josh for taking us for guiding us on the journey for driving the journey thank you josh and thank you to everybody for participating great fun great fun thank if you so you much terry appreciate your time thank, thank you everybody um, for those that are Spanish speaking right now, the, the, the Camino meeting is going on now as well. It just started about six minutes ago. So if you'd like to, you can go to our website, go to the calendar to get the link for that if you would like to join. Um, thank you again so much, Terry, for, for this evening. A lot of great, rich information. Um, would it be all right if we shared this PowerPoint as well? Absolutely. Thanks for checking and thanks to everybody. Great fun. Stay healthy. Perfect. Please. So uh, I will be posting the recording and the PowerPoint on our website on the calendar. So that'll be available for all of you. All right. Thank you. And drive carefully. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Bye, Have guys. A good evening, everybody. You too. Thanks, Josh. No problem.